Good morning, my name is Matt Sullivan. I'm the Director of Planning and Development for the Town of Wolfboro here with the October Coffee and Connections. Uh, in October, we're gonna talk to you a little bit about the Public Safety Building Feasibility Study that was completed uh, in the middle of 2018 and presented to the Town of Wolfboro Board of Selectmen in August of 2018 for their review. Uh, the feasibility study was actually commissioned towards the end of 2017 and into early 2018 by the Board of Selectmen in cooperation with the town manager. The intent here was to look at the existing public safety facility on South Main Street and investigate what the needs would be to upgrade that facility on that site based on current police staffing and fire department staffing. So really we wanted to see looking into the future between 30 and 50 years how our needs might change and whether the current site could meet those needs the first step in the process was to actually do an existing conditions assessment of the current building one of the things we wanted to look at was whether the current building could be retrofitted or renovated as part of any future expansion or renovation efforts uh, so that existing conditions was really the first existing conditions assessment was really the first step in this process and that was done uh, in early 2018 uh, and the next step was the space programming step and I'll talk about that in just a second but that was really done after we had a sense of what the current conditions of that building were including both the front building shown here and also the apparatus bays which are to the rear of the site uh, many of you may have heard that there are some environmental conditions that make this site particularly challenging uh, there's some challenging soil he soils here when it comes to hydrology of the soils, uh, some wetter soils, high water table, those sorts of issues. Uh, so that does create some, uh, some issues for future development of the site, and I'll get into that in just a second. But that was part of our existing conditions assessment as well. Uh, just a few quick facts about the existing building. Uh, it's at 251 South Main Street, and it was actually constructed in 1974. Uh, and since that time, there have really only been minor improvements, including some ADA improvements to make it accessible, at least in the lobby area, the primary public area. Uh, it's really about 13,000 square feet in size, and that's important for the next part of our conversation when we talk about the needs. So keep that 13,000 square foot number in mind. Uh, but really, again, minor improvements are the only thing that have been made since that 1974 construction date. So it's been a significant amount of time that this building has really remained as is. Uh, as you can see from sort of the picture here, uh, the site is somewhat uh, small in size. I would note though, however, that outside of this yellow bounded area, we actually do maintain ownership of this small parcel up to the front. That's actually been merged with the public safety building lot shown here. So we have a little more space available. It's about two acres in size total for development area. Um, again, the library facility is located adjacent. There's no formal connection really between the two uh, facilities, but it is something that we looked at, and I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Currently, there are two driveway cuts on to South Main Street, uh, one for entrance and exit, uh, but we do want to consolidate those potentially in the future to make that a safer intersection with Huggins Hospital being right across the street. The building envelope itself is in reasonable condition. There are some issues. There were some issues with the rear apparatus base several years ago due to an accident. Uh, but there are really some needs for corrective design, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that we're looking at upgrading the facility. So let's talk a little bit about what the needs are moving forward. And we did a couple things here. We looked not only at our existing condition need, the needs that are necessary for the, the police and fire today, but also what our needs might be out to 2032. We wanted to take into account what our growth potential is as a community and what the staffing needs might be into the future as well based on changing conditions that we see in fire and law enforcement. I would also note that a lot of these needs are also related to uh, best management practices on the fire side of things and federal requirements on the police side of things. There are certain uh, separations that are needed for keeping juveniles from others. Certain requirements when you're actually unloading prisoners in, in a sally port, for example. Uh, the police and the fire department folks are the best to talk about those particular needs, but this study actually reflects those because we want to make sure that we aren't uh, really hamstrung in the future the way that we are today. Uh, our current facility, when it comes to being the, a potentially accredited police department, doesn't allow us to achieve that, so we need to make some significant upgrades moving forward. And again, the police chief could discuss that in more detail at a later time. The executive summary of our space needs, and I'll get into the details in just a second. Again, I mentioned we have a 13,000 square foot facility currently. The 2018 need, as uh, LaValle Brenzinger helped us project, is actually 29,000 square feet. So that's really two and a half times the existing facility that's being provided. So 
you can see that we really don't have the space available and necessary for both of those departments to carry out their functions uh, appropriately. So we have really significant needs. I would note that because of really negligible expected population growth in the future, our 2032 needs are not significantly different. Uh, in fact, we're really only suggesting uh, an increase in square footage necessary to about, of about 300 square feet. So we anticipate that a building that would be built today in 2018 would potentially be viable, uh, would be viable out to 2032. And I think this is a good time to note that when planning this facility from a construction perspective, we're planning it as a 50-year solution. Uh, I mentioned the existing building is from 1974. It's about, you know, 50 years as it is right now. We hope our next building will last just as long, and we want the construction style to match up with that. One thing I do want to note as well is that uh, we've identified sort of a middle space need between 2018 and 2032 of 2022. And the reason for that is 2022 is actually the year that we expect that this will go to the voters. Uh, we do have some work to do after this feasibility study is complete, and I'll get to that in just a second. But 2022 is when this is actually on our capital improvement plan and when we plan to take the building to the voters for their, hopefully, their approval. So I just want to note that first. Let's dive in a little bit more on the, the space needs, though. I just want to talk about that. Uh, the first category of needs is really common and shared space. These are sort of the public spaces within the public safety building that we're proposing. And of course, we're proposing a, a joint building. Uh, we need some interview rooms. We have a community room that's actually our, doubles as our emergency operations center for any kind of emergencies that take place in town. We want to have some space available for that. We have public restrooms, a public lobby, an entry vestibule. All of that space feeds into the need for about 2,700 square feet that will be needed for this uh, particular common and shared space between the police and fire departments. So that's the first category that we look at. Next section is record storage. These are records, record storage needs for the police department primarily. Uh, the recommended need for that out to 2032 actually is 600 square feet of storage space necessary. Community resources, this is for our animal control folks and uh, canine storage, the total need here being between 200 square feet and 300 square feet between 2018 and 2032. So again, 200 to 300 square feet necessary there. Administration, this is on the police side of things. This is for the chief of police, the captain, uh, some small meeting rooms, potential intern workspace, uh, some additional file storage and a small conference room. The need there being about 850 square feet. Dispatch, uh, I should have noted this in the beginning, but while we're talking about police and fire, the current building is really home to three departments. The third being the central dispatch. Uh, Wolfboro is fortunate to have its own dispatch department. Uh, really puts us in a, in a great situation from an emergency services perspective. Uh, we want to continue that in the future. And as a result, the need there is, for, is about 600 square feet for dispatch personnel specifically, and that's projected out to 2032. Booking and intake, this is where I noted some of the federal requirements being addressed. Uh, I won't go through the details here, but this does include vehicle sally ports where the cruisers are actually brought into the building for uh, taking uh, people who are detained out of the, out of the cruisers. Uh, includes hold, holding cells, different security vestibules, um, some fingerprinting area, that sort of thing uh, that you may be familiar with. The total need there being 1,900 square feet, and that's, again, projected out to 2032. That's how much space we actually need for our booking intake, and I can tell you right now that our current facility offers not nearly enough space for this type of activity. It can potentially create unsafe conditions for officers that are working closely with prisoners. Property and evidence, uh, obviously when we're uh, working through the criminal process, it's important to have space for storage of property and evidence. As a result, we've projected a need of actually 1,200 square feet. This includes sort of dedicated spaces for weapons, narcotics, chemical processing, uh, DNA storage. All of those things require very specific conditions, and as a result, we really see an increase in space need. And again, our facility right now really does not provide what's necessary. Investigations, this is for our detective side of our operations at the police department. We have a need here between 500 and 600 square feet moving out to 2032. Uh, file storage and really just the detectives offices directly. This also does include an interview room for the detectives, which is a, a unique requirement for their, for their operations. And then really the meat of the police department. Uh, we look at our patrol operations and training. Now, 
The need here is only about 1,000 square feet, which may seem small. And the reason for that is there's really a push from our police chief and really nationally to move our officers more into the field through their mobile data terminals that they have in their cruisers. So the more time spent on the road, the more time spent doing the enforcement uh, that's necessary within the community. And as a result, uh, we sort of are, have a minimal space being provided for the patrol workstations and sort of some shared space being provided, shared office space for that. But again, really with an eye towards having them out in the field uh, and in the community. And then lastly, PD departmental support. There are specific needs here. Uh, our police department and our fire department do need locker space for their officers and their firefighters. Uh, so we have some locker rooms being provided here. Uh, so that they have the ability to sort of live in the building if necessary during any kind of emergency event, which is a potential. Moving on to the fire department side of things, uh, we have the same administrative needs, fire chief, uh, uh, deputy fire chief, meeting room, uh, lieutenant's bunk rooms, those are all things that are necessary and as a result we're projecting a space need of 1,200 square feet and that's out to 2032 there. The fire station itself, uh, this includes their kitchen, their dining area. Uh, the fire department is unique in that they actually have folks living there essentially overnight um, during the week. So that's critical to provide space for them so that they can really have all the comforts, at ho comforts of home, if you will, uh, during their time there. Um, so that space need, including uh, the actual apparatus bays, which I should note are about 8,500 square feet in size, the total need there is actually 13,000 square feet. So this is really uh, more than a third of the required need for the entirety of the building. And that's really specifically for the, the fire department's operations specifically. Uh, so again, 13,000 square feet is a necess necessary room there. And then fire department also needs some departmental support. This includes uh, really specialized equipment space for uh, extractors, air compressors, uh, their air cascade, different exhaust ventilation, uh, hose drying and training tower. These are all very specific needs that are part of best management practices for the fire department that are being programmed. And that's a need of 1,200 square feet out into the future. Lastly, we do have some just general facility needs, uh, IT storage, telephone storage, mechanical rooms, uh, utility closets, the need there being 2,300 square feet. Uh, that's sort of fixed space that we'll need into the future. But I would note that what we're proposing here is a fully ADA accessible building as, to the oppo as opposed to the existing structure, which is only partially accessible. So as I noted before, when you sort of break this out into building blocks, it's sort of interesting to look at it this way. You'll see the biggest building block is under our fire department category there, and that is the apparatus bay need. Again, that's 8,600 square feet. Uh, we have the police department identified there going through booking intake, dispatch, uh, patrol, property and evidence, PD departmental support, uh, down to administration. You can see how the building blocks really compare in size. Uh, we have the common and shared space up in the upper left. That's the yellow blocks there. Those are those common spaces I referenced at the beginning of the presentation. Then you can see the, fall, the smaller fire department needs, uh, but really the apparatus but again being the most significant and then building support being those mechanical and utility rooms I talked about just a second ago. But this is a nice way of looking at those space needs in a sort of two scale way to help us understand uh, what our needs are moving forward. Uh, the next step in the process after actually looking at that space program, and, and I should note that uh, when we first did our space program, we actually had a need of about uh, 37,000 square feet. We went through five iterations of that space programming need down to the 29,000 number that we're at now. Uh, there were some things programmed originally which really weren't necessities in the eyes of the chiefs that were involved in the process. So we did remove about 7,000 square feet of need. Uh, so we ended up with that 29,000 square foot number. After we went through that programming phase, the next, the next uh, part of the process was really to look at the site and what uh, ability the site has to provide those necessary 29,000 square feet. Again, I want, to keep in mind, I want you to keep in mind that the existing building is only 13,000 square feet in size and takes up a significant portion of that lot. So when we first heard the 29,000 square foot number, we had some significant concerns about our ability to get it on this site, particularly with the access challenges on South Main Street. Uh, there's a high traffic volume there. So we went through three concepts. I won't present the three concepts today, but we ultimately decide on this concept. I just want to quickly walk you through this and, and talk about what's going on. So, this is South Main Street here. This is the library facility, which will be reconstructed, obviously, in 2018 and 2019. The proposed building actually has the apparatus bays right here adjacent to South Main Street facing towards downtown. 
So fire trucks would actually exit here and turn on to South Main Street. There would be one in and out as opposed to the two entrances that we have right now. Additionally, the parking would actually be pushed to the rear of the lot. Currently, we do have some uh, parking along the side here adjacent to the library and out front. That parking would really be pushed towards the rear of the lot to get it away from the road and to really push as much of the emergency services towards the front of the lot as possible. Uh, here you can see there's some white space. That's actually where the sally ports and uh, some small parking area for uh, department vehicles would be. There would be an access point there as well for both departments so that they could get into the facility. You'll see that the blue area is really the police department area. And then the, the red area here and here, those are where the fire departmental support and administrative functions would be located. The entrance for the public would be in this yellow area up here. Uh, the public would have the ability to park in this visitor area right here and walk directly in to the vestibule lobby area. And then we'd have our emergency operations center right here uh, that would be publicly accessible as well. So again, Fire department directly adjacent to, the, to South Main Street, police department sort of towards the back, parking to the rear of the site, and then also the shared space being up here. One thing I want to point out is that the zoning in this area, which is really the planning department's function in a lot of ways, the zoning in this area really requires that buildings be pushed to the front of, this, of the lot. And the reason for that is that we want to create a more village-like feel out on South Main Street. So one of the big considerations when looking at the three concepts that we looked at was that this was the concept that really pushed that building as far to the front as possible, aligned it with the library, and created that village-like corridor that we're really going for in our downtown area. So this concept is really the preferred concept. Um, I just want to quickly show you how uh, the site design would function in relation to the library. Uh, the library parking area is being reconfigured, but we do anticipate that we would have at least some emergency access over this area right here in the event that our sole entrance and exit is blocked. So we would maintain some emergency access in the event of some emergency uh, that might happen on either one of these lots, which I think is a real advantage of having this sort of campus style development on South Main Street. This is just a breakdown of the internal space, uh, but you'll see again, we have the, the same design, the fire department here, the police in the rear. This actually breaks down when we look back at our space program, where those different evidence, uh, holding cells, uh, departmental support functions, where those would be in the building. So we've actually gone through the internal building modeling process as well as part of this work. This is a phased construction design, and the reason for that, which I should have mentioned at the beginning, is that we are actually proposing to maintain the existing building skeleton for at least the front of the building. That's this phase three area right here. Phase one and two will be new construction. Phase three will be reserved to the end because we've maintained departmental functions in that existing building as long as possible. Uh, once phases one and two are complete, we move fire and police into those respectively and actually move them out of phase three to allow for renovation to happen in that section of the building. So this would be a phased construction effort uh, project. Just some more detail on what the space plan would be internally. Uh, the equipment bays, I mentioned this is parking area with the sally port being here. Staff entrance is here and here. And then the public entrance up here adjacent to that parking area that we talked about just a few seconds ago. More detail on the second floor. This would be a two-story building as proposed. That's one of the ways that we achieved actually getting that 29,000 square feet on the lot. And now for the really exciting pieces of, of this. Uh, what would this look like? And we understand these are really preliminary uh, renderings, so uh, we don't, we're not sure the building would actually look like this, but based on our space design, this is what the building might look like in the future. Uh, this is probably the best rendering. Is this really from the streetscape? This is South Main Street going this way. These are the apparatus bays heading out towards downtown. This is the existing portion of the building that would be renovated. Public parking back here, parking lot back here, library over here. And you can see that we've tried to really uh, fit with the traditional character of what's going on on this site uh, moving forward into the new design. Uh, this is the side rendering with the apparatus space facing this way. This is uh, from the bat looking from the back of the lot towards South Main Street out here. You can see the fire, a fire truck exiting here from the apparatus bay. So this would be the view from the rear of the lot with that parking area there for police vehicles and fire vehicles. And this is sort of just an overhead view looking, looking down on the structure. 
This is a nice little zoomed in focus view with some traditional brick coloring being used. Again, this is the view sort of South Main Street going right here, a sidewalk here, and then looking at the apparatus bays and the existing building that is to be renovated right in this, this area right here. So we also went through the process of actually scoping out the construction costs for this. And what we were looking at is at least providing a preliminary budgetary figure to the Board of Selectmen. And I think that that's really uh, one of the critical things about this project. Originally in the CIP, this project had been scoped at about $5 million in total cost. Uh, as we went through the design process and looked at our realistic space programming needs, we're realizing that we have much more significant needs than originally expected. As a result, going through the construction cost estimating side of things, uh, we actually came up with a preliminary budgetary figure of $11.9 million, which is uh, more than double the amount being proposed in the CIP process. So we have a, a much clearer understanding of what our needs are and what the associated costs might be. And as a result, we're sort of thinking that we might need to go back to the drawing board and explore other concepts within the community. But one of the critical things that we know now after going through this process is that we have a good understanding of what our space needs are from the two departments or three departments that I've discussed today. So as a result, in August when this presentation was uh, done to the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Selectmen actually charged the Feasibility Study Committee with uh, working with LaValle Brenzinger moving forward to actually con contract to look at other needs or other locations within the community that might provide the space needed for this type of facility. We'll also explore whether or not uh, splitting of the facilities might be something that may need to be done in order to, to reduce costs moving forward. But again, we don't expect the space needs themselves to change significantly. We only expect to look at whether there might be other ways to phase this construction or split the construction in a way that minimizes the impact to the taxpayers. So we do feel like the big value add out of this process was understanding what our needs are moving forward. So. Uh, we look forward to so hopefully reporting on our, our work moving forward out to 2018 and 2019. Uh, we will be working on furthering that feasibility study per the rec recommendation of the Board of Selectmen and hopefully coming up with a better idea of what the other options are when it comes to this project. Uh, but we're really thankful for the community support at least thus far in the process and on the feasibility study. Uh, and we're really excited to move forward. Obviously, those three departments are a critical piece of Wolfboro's uh, emergency services and really the safety and security of this community. Uh, and we, of course, welcome any input that you have on potential options for us moving forward. Uh, we're always open for comments and questions about this process as well. If you have those, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, uh, the planning director. Uh, my email is planningdirector at wolfboronh.us. I can answer any questions about the feasibility study or direct you to one of the chiefs for more specific questions. You're also welcome to call me at 603-569-5970 if you have any specific questions about this project or any other projects going on in town. I just want to thank you so much for joining us uh, for this October Coffee and Connections, uh, and we hope to see you next month. Thanks so much.